With five weeks to go until the midterms, Republicans are trying to pretend they have a serious governing philosophy, but the leader of their party, Donald Trump, is making that difficult for them by claiming all elections are now rigged and launching a deranged attack on Mitch McConnell and his wife, Trump's former Transportation Secretary, Elaine Chao. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Even if you're someone who follows politics very closely, you'd be hard-pressed to name a single Republican policy idea, aside from cutting rich people's taxes or banning abortions or passing a law that says it's illegal to win an election if your name is not Donald Trump. Senior! <laughs> Don't try to sneak in on a technicality. <laughs> Which is why Republicans are now trying to at least create the appearance that they have a plan to tackle the issues people care about by debuting what they're calling a commitment to America. House GOP leader Kevin McCarthy debuted the plan at an event last month, although if you ask me, it looks like it might be light on specifics just from the size alone. What we're gonna roll out today is a commitment to America. And we wanna roll it out to you, to the entire country, to know exactly what we will do if you would trust us and give the, us the ability to take a new direction for this country. What the commitment is, is a plan. A plan for a new direction. So you know what? We've created a commitment to America. I think it's a bad sign when your plan for the future of the nation can be pulled out of your pocket like it's an acceptance speech at the Emmys. <laughs> you want us to lead the nation? Oh my God, this is such a surprise. Um, uh, first off, I have to thank my agent and all the good people at A24 and, um, no, oh, no, they're playing me off. Oh, thank you. Uh, Fox News, my kids, Zachary and Tallulah, go to bed. <laughs> Seriously, that's your plan? The user manual for my dishwasher is thicker than that. <laughs> but I guess we can't be shocked that GOP's plan to fix America is the size of a poster stapled to a telephone pole that says free guitar lessons when the guy who came up with it is the same guy who once said this at a Trump rally in 2020. I want you to watch Nancy Pelosi hand me that gavel. Yeah! And I promise you this, I won't bang her with it, but I'll bang the end to the socialism and yes to America. I'll bang the end to the socialism and yes to America. That sounds like a Mad Lib filled out after a concussion. <laughs> Did somebody bang you with a gavel? Seriously, what does that mean? That's like something you'd see on a bootleg MAGA hat you bought online from a foreign country. Also, it's funny that whenever these guys screw up, they think they can save it just by saying yes to America at the end. Like, it's the equivalent of saying San Dimas High School Football Rules. Oh, it's an 80s reference for old people. You know what that siren means. If you got that joke, it's time to schedule your prostate exam. Because putting your health first is always... Excellent. And waiting until too late is... Bogus. Anyway. The GOP's commitment to America has been so underwhelming that even Fox News has been questioning why it's so thin. The number three House Republican, Elise Stefanik, was asked that question on Fox recently, and unsurprisingly, she did not have a very good answer. Let's start with this description by New York Magazine. It says, the document has lots of bells and whistles and factoids about the hellish reign of Joe Biden and his Democrat party. What it doesn't have is a whole lot of specificity. You heard that from the president, from other Democrats too, who say there are a lot of slogans. Yes, everybody wants a safe country. They want good education. They want crime to go down. But it's the details of how you do that that matter. So why not more details in this plan? Shannon, there are ample details. So number one, an economy that's strong. Son of a gun, that is a good idea. <laughs> Do they honestly expect voters sitting at home watching to hear that and think, hmm, strong economy. I like the sound of that. It's like one of those commercials where someone at a kitchen table responds to a bodiless voice asking questions about making your life better without ever giving any answers as to how. Would you like to make more money? Yes. Would you like to do it from the comfort of your own home? Sure. Do you want a bigger house, a nicer car? I do. Would you like to improve your marriage and spice up your sex life? Um, uh, definitely. <laughs> Would you like to learn more? Uh, yes, please. Then call 1-800-155-UH. <laughs> Yet they won't give up on this dumb pamphlet. They keep trying to make it a thing, even though Republicans themselves are unenthused by it. McCarthy and 
Stefanik in particular keeps showing it off and even trying to give it to people as a gift. Join us in supporting the commitment to America, a new direction. Democrats have no plan. House Republicans have a plan, and it's our commitment to you. Let's bring in House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, who joins us here on the couch. Sir, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Great to have you. This is exactly what we're talking about. I got a present for all of you. Your own commitment to America. And in here, we talk about a government that's held accountable. You know, we've accused Republicans of being in a cult of personality around Donald Trump, and they are not helping when they literally walk around handing out pamphlets. <laughs> but at least the Fox News host looks super psyched about it. <laughs> That's the way your kid looks when they're expecting a PS5 for Christmas. Instead, you give them a New York City T-shirt you definitely bought at the airport. <laughs> in fact, I'm pretty sure at the same time Joe Biden was on Morning Joe giving each of the hosts there their own PS5s. <laughs> Which makes sense. He's so desperate to win back young voters, I wouldn't be surprised if he made a cameo in season three of Euphoria. Come on, guys! <laughs> Let's stop with all the sex and drugs and take the Amtrak down to the swimming hole for some good old-fashioned fun. <laughs> oh, you know what that siren means? A modern reference for young people. We did one for the olds and now one for you guys. We are shamelessly pandering to win over Gen Z. And hey, youngs. Psst, over here. I know I reference old movies, but I like cool stuff. Fezco and Root, that's my Bill and Ted. And if you love young stuff, you'll love Late Night with Seth Meyers' hot new segment, A Closer Loop. <laughs> that music is way too loud! Also, I take it back. That's not music. <laughs> anyway, there's a reason this dumb new pamphlet is so flimsy and why even GOP cheerleaders on Fox News are so unenthusiastic about it, and that's because the GOP doesn't actually have a discernible policy agenda or a serious governing philosophy. It's just a coalition held together by resentment and paranoia and conspiracy theories and culture war issues, and above all else, a hostility to democracy that is still best embodied by their leader and People Magazine's sweatiest man alive for six years running, <laughs> Donald Trump. There's no ideological core to the GOP that's distinct from Trumpism, as Trump himself demonstrated over the weekend when he held a rally in Michigan and once again whined about the various investigations into his criminal behavior while also denouncing the legitimacy of all future elections unless he wins. And as usual, he also did it in the weirdest way possible. But I'm afraid we have never had, we, and I don't believe, I don't believe we'll ever have a fair election again. The way they win is to cheat in elections. They cheat like dogs. Now, <laughs> Trump hates dogs. That's indisputable. But he really doesn't seem to know what dogs do. I mean, <laughs> they can pee on rugs. They can chew up your shoes. But in what way do dogs cheat? <laughs> I mean, if you've ever been cheated by a dog, that's the definition of a shame on you situation. <laughs> Did a dog once pretend to throw a tennis ball to Trump? <laughs> I once met this dog, big dog, strong dog, and he said to me, do you want the ball? And I did, I did want the ball. <laughs> and he knew I wanted the ball because I was doing a little dance, and so, and so he threw it, but little, little did I know, it was only a pretend throw. It was a fake out throw, and he kept it in his paw, hidden behind his back, but I was looking everywhere. I was. Looking for the ball under the couch behind the chair. Getting more agitated <laughs> with every passing second. So badly did I want that ball, I wanted it to start spinning myself in circles. <laughs> the whole thing was very, very unfair. No one's been treated worse by a dog than I have. <laughs> in the history of America, no one's ever been treated worse <laughs> than I have. You know, and the worst people, the worst people are dogs. So now, instead of just claiming the 2020 presidential election was rigged against him, Trump is going a step further and claiming in advance that all elections are rigged. We can't have a functioning democracy where one side just insists that every time they lose, it's illegitimate and that they're the only ones entitled to hold power. I mean, you don't see Mets fans insisting they actually won the division after getting swept by the Braves this weekend. They're accepting defeat the way they always have, by being absolutely miserable, you know? <laughs> That's how democracy is supposed to work. The winners celebrate and the losers sit at home crying into their Jacob deGrom jerseys. <laughs> and by the way, lest you think I'm picking on the Mets, I'm a Steelers fan and we lost to the Jets this weekend. <laughs> yeah, the Jets, those Jets. <laughs> I went to the game and you know what the worst part about flying from New York to Pittsburgh to watch your beloved Steelers loses? Flying home on a plane full of <laughs> Jets fans. 
all drinking and partying like they just won the Super Bowl. And hey, I get it. If you're a Jets fan being two and two in October, that's your Super Bowl. <laughs> Enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> Traffic was so bad today with the parade on Fifth Avenue. <laughs> Ticker tape. The point is, the GOP does not have a discernible ideology that's separate from Trumpism. In fact, they've had ample opportunity to separate themselves from Trump over the years. And even now, after he's been rejected over and over by voters and remains under multiple serious criminal investigations, they refuse to denounce him. Over the weekend, Trump even attacked their own Senate leader, Mitch McConnell, and McConnell's wife, former Transportation Secretary Elaine Chao. And even then, Florida Senator Rick Scott still could not find it within him to stand up for his Senate colleague and denounce Trump. I have to ask you about what appears to be a threat by former President Trump against your colleague, Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell. Uh, Trump said, quote, he has a death wish for supporting Democratic-sponsored bills. He also mocked McConnell's wife and his own former Transportation Secretary Elaine Chao as, quote, China-loving and Coco Chao. You're a member of the Senate GOP leadership. Are you okay with this? Well, hey, look, I, I can never talk about, respond to why anybody else says what they said. But here's what it is, the way I looked at it is, I think, you know, what the president is saying is, you know, we've, there's been a lot of money spent over the last two years. Uh, we've got to make sure we don't keep caving to Democrats. It's causing unbelievable inflation and causing more and more debt. Um, as you know, you know, the president likes, likes to give people nicknames. You can ask him how he came up uh, with the nickname. Uh, I'm sure he has a nickname for me. First of all, he definitely has a nickname for you. <laughs> Trump wouldn't ever even try to rhyme or be alliterative. We all know Penis Rick. <laughs> he tries to wear a hat to confuse us, but we know what he looks like. If only there was a word that rhymed with Rick that also made penis. <laughs> I think the most insulting part of these interviews is always when they try to explain away something that was very clearly a deranged outburst from Trump as if it was something that was a sophisticated take on politics. Dana, what I think the president was saying is that we have to encourage people to consume more, which will in turn drive up supply, thus boosting the economy. Senator, he tweeted, eat my nuts. Yes. <laughs> you see, Dana, he wants us to consume more almonds and cashews to promote American agriculture. Well, Senator, his next tweet was, and when I say nuts, I don't mean almonds and cashews. <laughs> Again, Dana, maybe he meant peanuts or macadamia nuts. We could go back and forth all day trying to put ourselves in his head, and I don't know. His next tweet was, I mean testicles. <laughs> I, think, I think I'm gonna go, Dana. Thank you for joining us, Senator Penis Rick. With <laughs> midterms approaching and the polls tight, Republicans want to pretend they have a serious governing platform, but Trump makes that impossible because he constantly rips the mask off, revealing that they are, in fact, not a serious governing party. They're entirely devoted to the cult of Trumpism and the threat he opposes to democracy. They're all his friends, his loyal servants, his closest allies, or as Trump himself might put it, they're all his... Dogs. <laughs> Dogs. This has been A Closer Look. The midterm elections are coming up, so to make sure that you're good to vote in this election, visit our good friends at headcount.org to check your voter registration status or to register to vote.